Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am back again with another really interesting video. So in this video, guys, we are going to again explore hugging face, but with a specific type of large language models, which are called the table question answering large language models. So yes, guys. In my previous videos, I got a plethora of comments from you guys. So thank you for that. And one of the major asks was that I should cover when a certain LLM model should be used. So now I think that I should be using a use case by use cases to say which type of large language models are specifically used for a certain type of use case. And in today's video, we are going to cover the table question answering use case. So without taking any time further, let's get started. So first of all, guys, if you want to know which model you want to use for your model, uh, for your use case, you can just go to huggingface.co website, click on models here, and you can see that on the left hand side, there are many tasks that are listed. Okay, so you have got filter task by name and here in this filter, if I just type table, you can see the table question answering module is present. If I remove this filter, you can still see that there are multiple type of use cases like computer vision, like multimodality, text classification, which is pretty straightforward. We have explored that. But basically, if you have a use case, all you have to do is search here with the task name. So in our use case, we are going to search the table question answering. Once I click on it, you can see that on this center side, all the models are filtered and you can see currently 82 models are present. So without taking any time, you can clearly see that one of the top most trending model is the Microsoft Tapex base model. So for this, let's just try this model and see what it actually says. So I'm just going to click on it. And you can see that once I click on it, it gives me an entire model card of uh, describing the model. And basically you can see that uh, this also gives us a sample code on how I can use this model in transformers. Okay. And not only that, it also gives a certain documentation here if you want to fine tune this table question answering model. So whenever you want to know about any model, guys, just go to that models page and you will see all the information that you want to see. But for now, because they have given us this sample code, I'm just going to use this similar code to actually test out this model on a Google Colab. However, guys, so it's not necessary that you will find this kind of documentation for all the models. So it is possible that sometimes you have to Google on how to use this model. But I'll show you that as well. But first of all, let's try Microsoft Tapex model. Okay, so all you have to do is just click on the copy button here and go to your Google Colab. Just ignore uh, this notebook for now, guys. I'll explain you the notebook before, uh, notebook later. But for now, let me just create a simple code cell and just paste out the entire uh, code here. Okay. Now I'm just going to run this and let's see if this actually works, the code just as it is. You can see that it is already starting to do something. Uh, I'm sure that it is right now loading the model, which it is. Yes, definitely. You can see that it loads the model. However, when it prints the output, it doesn't give us the correct output. So basically it gives us an empty list. And what you can do in that situation is that you can try to change something in this code to actually get some output. But to change something in the code, I first have to understand the code, right? So let's first understand what this code is actually doing. So the first thing first is that we are just importing the libraries. The second thing is we are actually loading the tokenizer. So we know that every uh, any type of uh, question answering model or uh, language models or generative AI model needs a tokenizer. What does tokenizer do? Tokenizer is simply used to convert your text into tokens, right? Because this is a model. It doesn't understand the text. It understands numbers. So tokenizer basically converts your text into numbers. And this tokenizer is what I'm going to feed to our model. And to load the model, uh, they have used a BART for conditional generation uh, class to actually load this model. Now, we can obviously use a different method to load our model, but we that we will see it in a later uh, part of this video. But for now, you can just see that we have just loaded the model like this. Now, what they do is they have created a pandas data frame. 
and this pandas data frame just has got two columns in it year and city and then we just select this query select year where city equals to beijing and then we are just creating our tokenizer in which we are passing this whole pandas data frame our query and the return tensors value pt okay so basically this is nothing but uh, making sure that your uh, encoding is done perfectly and then finally when you call model dot generate all you have to do is pass this encoding okay and then using uh, so model dot generate uh, is going to generate certain output but again as i told you that uh, the output that your model generate is actually again a numeric output because your model understand vectors and not text so you have to convert that numeric output into a text output right so here is your tokenizer dot batch decode comes into place where it actually decodes the output and actually generate a text response for you and that is what you are printing and then there's a comment uh, well, let's remove this however you can see that when i ask the query which year select the year where city was equals to beijing this doesn't did it didn't work that well right so let me change this query so select year where city is uh, let's say city is athens right and in this situation i'm not going to run the entire model loading i'm going to put this in a new cell and now run the query and you can see that when I say the city is equal to Athens, although Athens is mentioned twice, 1896 and 2004, it still just recognizes 2004 is the city and it gives us that answer along with a small comma as well. So you can pretty much make out that this way of using this model and in fact just this model in general is not performing that well. So now let's say if you have a use case of table question and answering and you actually want to use Microsoft Apex model by testing it out in this way, you will be able to find out if this model is actually good for you or not. So 100% this model doesn't seem to perform that good, although it was in the most trending list. But uh, we are now going to select another model, right? So you can see after the Microsoft Tapex model, you have got the Google models, which is Google Tapas Base Fine Tuned WTQ. Let's select this model. Let's see if this model works fine or not. Now, if you select this model, you can see that in a little bit bottom, Google has actually given the accuracy results of these models. Okay, so that's really helpful whenever you want to understand if a model is performing better or if it won't perform that better, you can always look at the accuracy of that model. And for Microsoft Apex, although the results were not there and also for table question and answering, there is no leaderboard of actually determining model performs best on which of the criteria it becomes a little bit tricky for these type of models but you can always see that some companies like google they mention all the accuracy levels on their model page itself so then it becomes easier for you to select which model to use so for example you can see that this step as large model is a large model it has an accuracy of 0.5062 but if you use a base model it has a lesser accuracy and again if you start going towards the tiny model it has a even lesser accuracy so if your use case needs a very high accuracy you probably can use the topmost model or if your use case needs a higher speed then you can probably use a tiny model right so what we are going to do guys we are not going to go through the entire description but we definitely see that uh, a lot of ways are present here to fine tune the model and all these training procedures are mentioned here so if you are interested in this knowledge definitely go and check this out but what we are interested in is actually how to use this model right now in the Microsoft Tapex case you might have noticed that we were given a sample code to use the model but what if you are not given a sample code then how are you going to use it so the trick to that is use in transformer button when you click on the use in transformer button it actually gives you an entire code to uh, explain how you can use this model right and in our case you can see that what we were doing was we were using a tokenizer and a model right so we can create a tokenizer and a model with the help of our transformer apis like auto tokenizer or auto model for table question answering okay so this is what we are going to use so we are now going to use the google tapex model sorry google tapas model 
but with the transformers api we are going to use it and not with the with the with the way that microsoft gave us which actually makes me come back to my original collab notebook that i was going to show you now this notebook guys actually uh, uses google's model and microsoft model and actually compares the result with the same data set that we just saw let's see how it works so all you have to do is first import the libraries now i have imported here pandas and from transformers i have imported the auto model for sequence to sequence lm and this is for loading the microsoft tapas model the next one i have used it for the google model the auto tokenizer is for creating the tokenizer and the pipeline is just for uh, running the model along with the tokenizer right now with these two commented lines you can see that these two commented lines uh, was the original way of loading the microsoft tapas model uh, microsoft tapex model but now we are not going to use that we are just going to actually use a auto tokenizer so here i have used auto tokenizer from pretrain to load my model uh, load my tokenizer and auto model for sequence to sequence lm to actually load my model okay and then i have just created a pipeline and remind the fact guys and in the pipeline you have to mention the task so in our case the task is what is the task the task is a table question and answering task so this task you have to mention then you have to just give the model and the tokenizer and that is it this becomes a very standard syntax guys so instead of uh, actually i would recommend instead of using you know different tokenizer or different model loading techniques you can just use transformers uh, libraries because then it becomes very standard then you don't really have to you know google the code or look into the model api you can just use like a standard way to actually use these models so always go to uh this use in transformer button just click on this button always take the transformers api reference from here and use that now you can see that i have created a pipeline so pipe tapex is actually the pipeline which we will use to use this data or to query this data with microsoft tapex and the next way is now we have used the google's model okay so i am actually using the tapas based fine tuned sqa model there was another wtq and uh, so the one which we saw was wtq okay so you can go ahead and try that model but i have used the sqa model and it gave us pretty good results also which we will see it in a moment so you can see that model tapas is just basically the name of the model the tokenizer the model uh model loading again with the help of this auto model for table question answering class and then we have just created the pipeline okay so now my model is created now my pipeline is created for both microsoft and google so now when this part is created let me just run this quickly it is time to actually load our data and start asking questions on that data so it's that time so to load our data guys again this is the same exact example so we just created a simple panda data frame with the year and the city now we are now using the tapex model which is a microsoft tapex model and asking it giving it the table and asking the query select the year with the city is london so let's click on the run button and you can see that it doesn't give us any answer whereas if i would have asked it athens it might have given me some answer so if i put athens here you can see that it gives me 2004 which is the same uh, that we have seen previously but now let's look at the performance of the google's model so google's model is the tapas model and let me click here and now you can see the result is present in the result tapas and when i when i run it you can see it says 2012 so the year where the city is london is actually 2012 and google's model does answer us correctly okay so this is the way guys whenever you have a use case you should go to the models page you know sort the model through trending models look at the first model you want to use try it out look at the first two three models and try it out with your own data and see how accurate they were they are and you can always find the model card very helpful very useful to find out what is the accuracy of these models okay so that was the video guys i hope you guys like this video in this video we covered the whole way of actually uh, using a large language model to query your tabular data but this is a very useful thing guys because most of us who work in excel sheets and all these csv documents 
they need large language models like this to actually query on the data much more efficiently and luckily now in hugging face we have all these models and that to open source so uh, i would suggest you guys to please go to hugging face models and try all these models out and make your own chatbots that can answer questions on the basis of a csv or an excel or a tabular data okay so thank you so much for watching guys i hope you guys find this video helpful if you did then please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos i'll see you guys in the next video guys until then take care and bye bye and also if you want to leave any comments or feedback feel free to do so in the comment section thank you so much bye bye